Hello, Red Bear 773 here. Uh, long time no see. I haven't ma really made a video in a long time. I've been pretty busy. Uh, been uh, getting ready for LARPing, uh, which is live action role playing. If you don't know, I'll try to put up a link explaining it a bit. Um, that's me on the right, Red Bear. My character's name is Red Bear. And um, that's my friend Danny who plays Cypress. And, um, yeah, it, it's pretty cool. Um, you get to dress up in costume. I, I play Dwarf. Anybody that, that knows me or knows me in World of Warcraft or anything like that knows that I'm always a Dwarf. And, um, you know, I got the beard for it and everything. And, um, I'm kind of a tank type character. I'm, a, I'm just a straight fighter. You know, shield and mace. Uh, Danny... Cypress, he's a dryad. You can tell I got a better picture of him too. He's got an awesome costume. This was his first time playing, um, and he did he did great. Everybody loved him. It was great. Uh, he was a fighter for this event, but by the next event, he's going to be more of a scout type, which means he'll have some roguish abilities as well, like backstabs and stuff like that. I think uh, dodges and that type of thing. I'm trying to take just tank type stuff like parries and um, you know, it, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm not going to try to explain it too much but yeah. Okay, uh, there's the first picture. This is up in uh, Pennsylvania up by up towards Binghamton but in Pennsylvania. Montrose, Pennsylvania. Uh, let's see the next picture. There's, there's Cypress. There's my friend Danny plays Cypress. That's a much better picture of him. Uh, yeah, that that costume is just awesome. I mean, that's that's all you can say about it. Uh, the the black armor. It's my friend Bobby's old armor that he had when he first started playing. Uh, and then the um, the wood shingle stuff. Those are actually dollhouse shingles that he that he glued onto leather. That's the armor that he made. Um, which worked out okay. He lost a few shingles, but worked out all right. He's gonna work on it more. You can see some vines. And he's got the hat with the leaves and stuff. It came out great. And uh, um, this is another member of our group. Our group is called the Gilded Claw, and um, her name is Willow. Uh, real name Diana. And she's a rogue. She's uh, you can see the packets here. The blue packets are arrows. You can see her bow. Um, the orange packets are gas globes for alchemy, like sleep gas poison and stuff like that. And um, white packets are straight aura for. Um, I guess she had a few magic items. And um, there's Cypress and there's me over there in the background again. And, uh, all right, next. And there is uh, my friend E.B., who plays Lacera. She's a um, caster slash archer. You know, she, she throws some pretty strong arrows, but main, mainly she's a healer. And um, you can kind of see me in the background taking E because I am, uh, I'm repairing my armor. And, uh, so they're standing in front and guarding us, of course. I don't think anybody, any bad guys were there at the time anyway, but made for a good picture, I guess. Uh, somebody goes around out of game with a camera, and he's really good at, at not being seen when he's taking pictures, too. And, uh, let's see. and here we are fighting. Uh, here's some skeletons, jade skeletons, which means they keep coming back after you kill them. There I am, and Willow, and there's Lucera. And there's our leader of the Guild of Claw, technically. Um, my friend Danielle. Her character name is Aubrey. And she's our main healer. She's higher level. And, uh, but she also throws with an arrow, too. A bow and arrow, and you can barely see it, so. Damage and healing. And, um, and of course, way back there, you can barely see him, is, uh, Raven. Who's, uh, battle-wise is much higher than level than the rest of us and um, so 
he's in a golem that whole weekend. That's why well, he's wearing a red mask. You can barely tell. There's no real good pictures with, with of him, which kind of sucks. But um, he so in a golem, he's practically indestructible. I mean, not really, but in all for all intents and purposes, he he was able to do pretty much whatever he wanted. So he was he would run around and and just fight. You know, he would actually run out into the battle and get behind them and stuff. You can see he's about to attack them from behind and stuff. Um, so, the rest of us, you know, we, we hold the line. And, uh, oh, there's Cypress over there. You can barely see him in the corner. He's just working up to me. Maybe he had to get healed. And uh, this is the last wave battle of the weekend. We had kind of had our little pocket off to the side that we were protecting. And there's me and Cypress again, and Willow back there. And, let's see. There's me and Cypress fighting an undead. And, and there's our group. And I'm talking it over. Uh, I'm guessing that's an NPC we're looting. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a battle going on. Bit of a battle. Not much, I think. But that was our cabin right there. And there's another big battle taken from the NPC side, which is cool because, you know, when we're out there fighting, obviously we're not going to see things from that side. Uh, this is this group, the red and white group, is Vanguard, which is our good friends. We, we work together a lot. And uh, they're back there. You can see me and Cypress barely. And the rest of the claw is back there somewhere in that corner. Uh, so. Okay, we looped around. So, um... You know, that was a few weekends ago. What was it? Last weekend in April. The weekend before the last weekend in April. And, um, it was a lot of fun. But getting ready for that with all the costuming and, you know, my costume is new. I, I, just, I just bought it online. I got a really good deal on the whole costume. So I didn't have to do a whole lot. But everybody else had a lot of work to do to get ready for the event. It's the first event of the season too, so uh, there was a lot of things to do. So I was I was pretty busy with that, and uh, we were uh, my house was kind of the staging area for all of it. So my my train table behind me, and my whole room, and a lot of stuff downstairs too. There's just stuff everywhere, <laughs> you know, big mess and stuff. So uh, kind of a lot of work to do this. It's it's a lot of fun though. Yeah. And then after that, uh, actually the day after that event, actually that night, uh, my grandmother came home from the nursing home. And actually, I'll tell you about that later. Uh, yeah, that's right, this part's just about Nero. Uh, I call it Nero still, because uh, that's what it was when I used to pl play it. I haven't played it in like seven, eight years, and I just got back into it. Um, it's, it's really called Alliance now, HQ, uh, the, the, uh, the event is Ashbury, yeah, it's kind of complicated, they keep renaming it and stuff, it's, you know, legal, legally, whatever, I still call it Nero, and, uh, I'll, I'll put a link in the description for it, and, uh, yeah, okay, I will be right back. Alright, I'm back. And, um, I just figured I'd finish up here with the Nero stuff. Here's the shield. This right here. That's the claw symbol, the Gilded Claw. It's our group. And, um, actually, I might even get it tattooed on my arm soon. I was supposed to get that a while ago, but I never got around to it. And, um, yeah, that's our family. Me, my friend Bobby, Danielle sister, her husband now, Adam, um, we're all very tightly, tight family. Uh, we don't all have the tattoo, but some of us do. And, uh, let's see. and this is my symbol here, and with the hammer underneath. And that symbol basically I made up by, uh, well, me, my friend Bobby helped me bit, make it up a long time ago, probably, oh, 10, 12 years ago. Um, I like runestones a lot, 
and uh, basically I took a bunch of rune stones that I liked, that you know the meanings that I liked and stuff, and we mixed them together and made this symbol. Maybe someday I'll run down what it means. And um, hammer because you know I'm dwarf and he's into blacksmithing and stuff like that. And uh, if you're wondering uh, where I read, well I kind of explained it, but before we made this, we only made this shield for this event. Uh, before that, we actually made a real shield. Me and my friend Bobby. Let me get it. This thing. That's where the symbol came from. Basically, for the, the Nero shield, uh, turned it upside down. Uh, because that shape actually works better for Nero. Or actually, you, ju you just hold your arm straight down, and you can block really good with it. And uh, this thing, you can tell, but that's two 2x10s two that my grandfather actually put together. There's a seam right down the middle. And um, he glued them together with epoxy. He was going to make, uh, he has a woodworking shop in the backyard, and... Um, he was going to make this big, uh, like a pig, I think it was going to be. But it was when his emphysema was getting really bad, so he had to stop working in, in the wood shop. So uh, he never got around to making it. And then years later, when I wanted to make a shield, I found this giant block of wood. And I'm like, holy crap, I can make something out of that. So uh, worked out pretty good. There is, or I should say was, 21 spikes going around. Uh, they're little short spikes. They're metal, you know, real spikes. Uh, they're a pain in the ass to put in because uh, they have little short screws, so we had to... There's, there's the claw. Um, but we had to drill deep holes to put the spikes in and then plug them. Um, and because the screws were so short, some of the spikes have fallen out. Like the screws broke through, so we're gonna have to redo them. And also, uh, back in the day, we used to practice with real weapons. And so, uh, you can, I don't know if you can really see it, but there's a slash right there, that's from a sword. Um, so that, that spike got knocked off. I think that one too, one of these. A couple of these broke off recently just from being stored for a long time and stuff. But, um, but yeah, always always like this shield. It's really heavy, you know, thick, heavy wood. I actually carried around the Renaissance Fair a couple of times back in the day, like all day long. I had this thing strapped to my shoulder. I held it vertically for a lot of the time too. So yeah, those were the days. Now, now I'm happy with just hanging it on. <laughs> And, um, you know, so, uh, those, those were good old days. Maybe I'll stick a picture on here. I have a picture from the Renaissance Fair when we were all together. I'm not sure if I have the shield there or not. Oh. And, um, this right here is the mace. It's a latex weapon. Uh, there. Latex weapons, they're kind of iffy about passing, but it, it passed. It, it's its not hard at all. It's, it's nice. And, uh, it's a camera. There it is. Oh, crap. Okay. There. And, um, it, it's nice. I've never had a latex weapon before. We bought this for this event, too. Uh, I used to have a, a bigger hammer. It was almost a two-handed hammer. Well, it was a long mace. This is a short mace. And, uh, you know, it had, had a, just a big block head. It was like a giant pillow that you swung, swung around, you know, with the three-quarter inch PVC core. This one is very light. I'm, I'm still getting used to that. Uh, also, we had a big, long mace with, like, a star shape on the end. A big star shape. And um, that was really nice. But it didn't really pass. It only passed, I think, once because it was made out of camp pad, and they didn't like that. So it it, it was fine. Nobody thought it ever hurt. But 
they didn't they didn't like it. So uh, anyway, uh, so that's that. Oh, and you might see one back there. Here it is, close up. These are my throwing hammers. I can throw for throw it for the same thing that I swing my regular mace for fours. I have two proficiencies, so I swing fours. Um, and I'm a blacksmith, so of course I made all the throwing hammers. I think I think I made my mace. I think the shield was given to me, and I made uh, the armor for Willow. So, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. This Nero stuff. Uh, I don't know when I'm gonna be able to get to do it again. I mean, there's another event this month, the end of this month, uh, Memorial Weekend, but. Uh, Pretty sure I'm not going to be able to make it to that one, and that's because what I started to allude to before is uh, my grandmother is home now, and uh, she had been in the hospital for a long time. Okay, where is that camera? Okay. And um, and what happened with her is uh, her heart valve had aortic stenosis it was called um, the valve got really really tiny like a pinprick hole for the blood to go through so she got really weak and she uh, she got to the point where she pretty much couldn't breathe just about you know we had to take her we had to get an ambulance to take her to the hospital and um, you know uh, we knew that the valve was going to be a problem because I think about two years ago uh, one of the one of the doctors said that her valve was getting bad, but um, because her breathing was so bad already, because she also has emphysema, even though she never smoked, but she has emphysema just because my grandfather smoked for 40 years. But um, she was breathing so bad and everything, and um, her back is very curled. She's very hunched over. So um, that puts a lot more pressure on our lungs. So uh, they, they were afraid to do the surgery two years ago to replace the valve. So now here we are, we take her to the hospital and we're like, well now, now the valve's really bad, we have to do something. And for a little while we didn't know if we were going to be able to do anything about it. And then, uh, then we took her, she ended up going down to Westchester Hospital down near the city. And then we found a team of doctors that would do, that would replace the valve, uh, but they did it a different way without having to crack open the chest. Uh, they did it pretty much through the vein somehow. They they went up through the through the vein or artery, and you know, replaced it all from inside. It's it's amazing what they can do with that nowadays. So um, so after she had surgery, she was in the nursing home for a long time. Um, and now she just came home, actually the day I came back from Nero, and, uh, she's doing alright, she's not short of breath anymore, which is amazing, because before she was always short of breath, and, and the doctors and everything, even two years ago, were saying, oh, that's because she's got emphysema, and it's turning out that no, it was, it was the valve all along, two, three years ago. I, I wouldn't be surprised if four years ago she could have had the valve replaced with the regular surgery and never been out of breath, but, uh, you know, hindsight and all that. So, um, so they, they did the valve and she's home now, but she's still really weak. She can't, um, she can't stand or walk really at all. Well, she can't walk at all. She can barely stand a little tiny bit. So, you know, she's, uh, She's bedridden right now, and we have to you know, change her and all that. So, uh, and my mom can't really do it on her own, so I'm pretty much staying pat at home. Not really going to be able to get out much. You know, here and there, we can take shifts, go out for a couple hours here and there, but uh, you know, she's probably, probably should still be in the nursing home for a little while longer, but uh, Medicare came up, you know, they give you a hundred days in the nursing home, and then, and then they take away all of her income. So we brought her home. And it, it's okay. Uh, me and my mom are, are taking care of her pretty good. It's a lot of work, but it's, it's working out. Uh, but, uh, 
as far as Nero, that, that, that's done. <laughs> I, I have my one event. Uh, and, um, but, but she's doing alright. I think she's starting to get maybe a little better now that she's home. Hopefully. We'll see. Um, if she can get to the point where she can stand up and at least take a few steps here and there, then that would help a lot. But, um, you yeah, know, we'll see. Eventually, she should be able to keep on getting stronger now that she's got the new valve. That made a big difference. It's just she's been bedridden for so long from when she first went downhill with the, with the heart and then had the surgery and then was in the nursing home for a long time. It's going to be a long time. And, uh, also, what complicated things a lot is they found this like node, I'm gonna call it, inside of her esophagus because she's always had a hiatal hernia forever. That, that she could have had surgery for this. I remember when I was a kid, when I was little, she could have had surgery and she didn't want to do it. And of course now it's too late. She can't have that kind of invasive surgery to fix a hernia in their stomach. So um, she had uh, reflux real bad up the throat. So well, now she's got this node I think they call it a precancerous node inside of her throat that really they need to do an uh, ultrasound down the throat and zap it with like a, I don't know if it's a laser or what, but... But, um, they have to try to do something with it, remove it, but, uh, of course now she's home and she's not going to want to go out again, she'd have to go she'd have to go back down to Westchester to have it done and hey, we're gonna have a hard time talking her into it even though it's pretty obvious it needs to be done because it will turn into throat cancer esophagus cancer whichever it's called um, and also the big problem with it is it bleeds a little especially since with the heart problem they had to put her on blood thinners and that made it bleed a lot so now I think every couple months she's gonna need to, to go to, um, I think they call it infusion, where they, they, they give her a couple pints of blood. Uh, because she's slowly bleeding a little bit. And, uh, so, that's that. That's probably a big part of why she's, she's so weak, too. You know, her iron is just, she's, she's on iron meds, and she's just, you know, just enough. It's not, not where it really should be. So, uh, let's see, I guess that's pretty much all, everything about Grandma. And, uh, so, that's been a lot. But now, uh, as far as YouTube is concerned, uh, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not too busy anymore. I'm in my room all the time, I'll show you. I got this, uh, oh, come on. I got this baby monitor here. And the other end is right by Grandma, so I can listen to her whenever she needs anything. I'll go down and get her something or whatever she needs. And, um, you know, that's kind of, uh, it's like 5 in the morning right now, and I've been up all night. I'm kind of on the night shift. I really don't have to, you know, if she sleeps a lot, I really don't need to be awake. But, um, I'm usually awake all night anyway, so it works out. And, uh, of course, I'm... I'm up a lot at night, and then when mom comes around to uh, change her and stuff, I have to go downstairs and uh, help her out with that too, so I'm kind of sleeping here and there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that, and uh, let's see, what else was I going to talk about? Got Nero, I got Grandma. Yeah, videos for YouTube, I, I'm noticing I'm almost at 200 subs somehow, which is amazing. Thank you all my new subscribers. I don't I don't know how that happened because I basically haven't made a video in like six months. So, I, I made a few Minecraft videos, maybe that's where it came from, I don't know. But, um, thanks a lot, and uh, now that I'm up in my room and home a lot more, I'm probably going to get back into making videos. Uh, i got to get back to Hard Truck 2, uh, King of the Road, I <laughs> know, 
that's been stalled out for a while. Uh, I made part 8 actually a little while ago and I never put it up. I didn't know how much I liked it because this damn sound card conked out on me. The new one, yeah. Uh, but I kind of made it work and, and then I ended up just using the webcam like I'm using now. And that doesn't sound good, but now lately somehow I live streamed just a week ago or something and I kept messing with the regular mic that plugs into the sound card and unplugging it, plugging it back in and fiddling with the settings and I think I even took the sound card out and back in and um, now I got it working again somehow, the stereo mix so um, hopefully that will be back to sounding good of course it's, it's always kind of a pain setting that up but once I get it set up then I'll be able to make a bunch of Hard Truck 2 videos again and um, I don't know, maybe something else. I guess I could do something new in Railroad Tycoon 3. I haven't done that in a while. Uh, as far as the train table is concerned, eventually, but uh, I think you can barely see, uh, there's a, you know, the wire's all hung up, but there's still a bunch of stuff on my train table back there. It's a lot better. You, you, sh you should have seen it when, when I was getting, when we were getting ready for Nero. It's just, you can even see the trains on it. <laughs> just so much stuff. And, um, you know, very limited space up here. So, um, and downstairs, too, I had a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, I had the, the apartment to myself for a little while, so, uh, so we were able to make this area a staging ground for it. And, um, well, it's, it's, so, yeah, that stuff's all, all done with now. Um, I guess that's mostly what I wanted to talk about, and um, hopefully, maybe pretty soon I'll hit 200 subs and I'll have to make a video for that, and then uh, and uh, I'll probably get back to Hard Truck 2 pretty soon. So, um, I will see you guys later. Bye. Alright, quick little cut in here. I mentioned uh, Renfair pictures, so um, there you go. Uh, me of course with my shield. I wasn't sure if I had a picture with the shield in it or not, but I did. Uh, there's Danielle, uh, Aubrey in the Nero pictures. There's Bobby, Raven of course, and uh, that's my sister Heidi. Um, when she used to play Nero way back when, she played Savak and was a fox scavenger with a mask. Um, and that's her husband Adam. You know, they, they were her boyfriend at the time. This is probably, I don't know, maybe a year or so in their relationship. Oh, a couple years. No, more than that. Jeez, this picture was in, uh, 99, so yeah, was, yeah, a few years. And, uh, yeah. Funny thing is that bracer that Bobby's wearing there, um, I ended up wearing that later on, and, um, well, it's in this picture, I guess. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good picture. I just wish there wasn't a big bright flash in the middle of it. My mom probably took the picture. And, uh, let's see the next one. Next one. There. Thank you. This is my definitely. I, I remember now my first time going to the Renaissance Fair. This is in Tuxedo, New York, by the way. I mentioned that before. But um, this giant steel battle axe that actually is Bobby's but he let me carry it around. That's before we made the shield. There's my sister and, and Bobby and, and Adam. And uh, Bobby's Raven Nevermore and Adam would play his son in game or in, in Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Drake Nevermore. Of course, yeah. makes sense. And uh, you can guess where you, Bobby got Raven Nevermore from. And uh, let's see one more. And this is when we used to play Dungeons and Dragons together. Uh, Bobby was the DM. And, um, you know, this one game lasted, what, seven, eight years? In real life, years? You know, we'd get together whenever we could. It wasn't like every week or whatever. You know, sometimes there'd be months between when we would get together, but it, it dragged on and it was such an awesome epic game. Yeah, it lasted that long. And, um, you know, different people even changed out throughout the years. Like this, uh, 
is Donna, Bobby's girlfriend at the time, and um, it's probably one of the last times she played with us. And um, and that's her brother Anthony, who <laughs> doesn't look anything like that now. There's Danielle. This is not long after we met her. I met her at the bus stop, and uh, this was not long after that. And you know, there's Heidi. And we've all got our game face on for D and D, of course. Um, you know. We definitely knew the camera was there this time. And, um, yeah, there's me, of course, my arms crossed. Uh, I used to play a berserker back in the day, dwarf, of course, and, uh, so I was, I was always supposed to be just kind of crazy and, and kill everything, so, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Everybody's face is priceless. And, uh, I think that's it. So, yeah. And this is just the shield after I found it down in the basement. I mean, I, I knew where it was, but I haven't hadn't seen it in like five plus years. So I was worried about what condition it would be in. And this is after I cleaned it up and polished it with the lemon oil. And it came out nice. I think it even lost a couple, maybe one or two spikes after I took this picture. Just from, I had it um, leaning up against the wall. And I think it fell over and lost a spike. <laughs> the wood dries out, you know. Anyway, uh, back to the video.